Shall we begin? Stock Story is for education and entertainment. It is not for advice. Please do your due diligence before investing. Yeah, we just looked at the three first items of why you would want to invest for yourself, or I would want to invest for myself. And now we can take a look at the most important one, which is cost, and you're gonna see how much that impacts things. Cheers. So now we're on the big one, which is high mutual fund fees, and these are really critical. Uh, this is what can eat away at your wealth. And this is one of the reasons why I find do-it-yourself investing rewarding and successful. Um, high MER management expense ratio does eat into your returns, which I'll show in some of these upcoming slides. Uh, choose ETFs, pick stocks, whatever you do, you can probably beat the beat a mutual fund often because of those those high mutual fund fees. The holdings in each of these investments are also quite similar. So you, if you bought an ETF for the Toronto Stock Exchange and you had a Canadian mutual fund, it's probably got the same holdings, but uh, the ETF is less than a tenth of the management cost to hold those holdings. So it really doesn't make a lot of sense why you wouldn't choose the ETF uh, if the products are so similar. So let's take a look at, uh, this is just a little thing that I worked out for a mutual fund and ETF and actually the stock story, which is an example of, of picking your own stocks. Uh, and this is based on a $10,000 initial investment, putting in $1,000 every year and the final total of investments after the fees based on a 7% return. Um, so the mutual fund with the 2.11% return. It was a Canadian uh, Canadian value fund. The ETF, which is uh, 60 biggest companies in Canada, and then Stock Story, which are stock picks uh, using a value investing approach. Now, as you can see, in 10 years, the mutual fund is a little over 28,000. The ETF is a little over 32,000, and the uh, stock picking is a little over 32,000, just slightly ahead of the ETF. In 20 years, this is all based on a 7% return, so nobody's doing better than the other one. That That's another, another piece. This is just an indicator on how much the actual uh, management uh, expenses are eating into it. So after 20 years, the mutual fund is just over 63,000. The ETF is just over 74,000. And the stock picking is is uh, a little over $78,600. Uh, and then after 25 years, you're really starting to notice the difference as, as compounding. You're, you're really eating into it uh, with 90490 for the mutual fund. You're 114325 for the uh, ETF and 116523 Now, even just from the ETF to the mutual fund, you can see that you're leaving uh, about twenty-four thousand dollars aside because of the because of the management expense ratio, and then if you move to the one where you don't have the management expense ratio uh, with the stock picking, you're making a little bit more than the ETF. That's based on depending on how everybody succeeds in in that sort of situation. In this case, we're saying everybody's having the same return. Um, so here's some of the results. Uh, 2011, uh, everybody seemed to lose that year. In fact, uh, the stock picking lost the most. Uh, my value of investing had not been uh, had not evolved as much then as it as it did. It was sort of coming around at that point. I think I probably could have saved it a little bit, but we did. I did do poor, more poorly with the stock story. Uh, portfolio than did the ETF, which outperformed the mutual fund. Then after that in 2012, 
stock picking outperformed, ETF outperformed the mutual fund, but stock picking was number one. Same thing in 2013, stock picking was number one. This time the mutual fund actually outperformed the ETF. Uh, and these things are all net of the fees. So, so these are the real returns after their fees have come out. So uh, the mutual fund had had a good year that year. Uh, but then in 2014, they didn't have such a good year. They, they're only 0.31%. The ETF was 1204 and stock picking was 13.5%. And then in 2015, stock picking was the only one that was in the green with five, approximately five and a half percent. ETF was 7.9 percent uh, down, and the mutual fund was down a whole 14.31 percent. So as you can see, and, and some of this is from the management expense ratio, but it just shows you that you're paying for something that's not necessarily going to outperform the other ones that don't cost you as much. Uh, and here's an example of comparing the mutual fund and the ETF. If you look at these two things here, you'll find that the top 10 holdings of the mutual fund and the ETF are, eight of them are the very same companies, which uh, means that the products are fairly similar. Uh, on the right is the ETF and on the left is the mutual fund. Uh, mo in most cases, uh, they're heavy on the, the Canadian banks and... Uh, Anyhow, so the product's almost the same, and yet the, the expense ratios are significantly different. So it makes a lot of sense to utilize ETFs, which you do have to buy on the open exchange. So you do have to get a direct investing type account. So you have to do that part on yourself, on your own. Uh, whereas with the mutual funds, you can go through the bank. But like I say, you're going to pay uh, some percentage every year, regardless of how the fund performs, too. So anyways, here, here's a little uh, visual example. Uh, what we have here is we have an ETF for the S&P 500. Uh, we have the top 60 companies in Canada, or the biggest, uh, which is the light blue. And then we have the same mutual fund I was talking about before. And you can see the S&P, this is a Canadian hedged S&P. Uh, so it's probably a little confusing. So maybe we'll just compare it with the 60 uh, companies in Canada for the ETF. And you can see there's uh, a significant difference. Uh, this is a 14-year period. And you can see you're looking at uh, about a 40% gain for the mutual fund compared to 100% for the ETF. Uh, the next next one that I'm looking at is, is I try to take a three stocks that somebody might have picked. They're very common stocks, popular stocks in Canada. One is uh, Royal Bank. That's the light blue. The dark blue is WestJet and the orange is Canadian Tire. And you can see that they dwarf in that 14 year, same 14 year period. You can barely see the mutual fund uh, is 40% because these ones had gained about 500%. And this is over uh, a period where there was the 2007, 2008 drop, big significant drops in uh, uh, a lot of equities. Uh, but you can see like in, in the case of the Royal Bank, it's over a thousand percent over that 14 years. Now, there's no guarantee that this is gonna happen all the time, but if you're using a value approach and you're finding companies that are undervalued, you have a good chance of having a fairly good record with things. and. Uh, uh, potentially outperforming. And, and so one of the things I sometimes think I, I might start to do a little bit more of is get the ETF that has the index for a good chunk of money and then buy a few uh, outstanding companies that are undervalued by the market uh, and and use those to juice the returns up above the market level. But there's many ways to do this as we're going to see. But uh, uh, this gives you a pretty good example that uh, just leaving the money in the hands of professionals isn't always going to beat it. Like I said, there's guys like Peter Lynch that did 29% a year. That's phenomenal. And if you find somebody like that, then they're well worth 2%, 3%, whatever. But um, I think they're rare. Anyways, that's uh, the presentation. Thanks. So there you go. Uh, perfect example. I mean, there are some mutual funds. I mean, Peter Lynch ran a mutual fund for, I think it was Fidelity called Magellan, and he produced like 
uh, I think annualized returns of 29%. So some do very well, uh, but for most managers, it's pretty difficult to overcome that 1.5% to 2.5% that they're charging. Um, it puts the advantage to the ETF that's charging a lot of times less than a tenth of, of that amount, or to the individual investor who's picking uh, value stocks, uh, it's giving them quite the advantage when you start comparing the performances. Anyways, I think the next video that we'll put out is, is one on uh, managing portfolios for market risk. When markets are overvalued, uh, there are ways to manage your portfolio to reduce your risk and uh, same thing, there's ways to get more, uh, more invested in equities when the markets are low. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to talking to you again. Have a good one. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe. Look forward to interacting with you. Have a great day. You know that I would be alive If I was to say it to you Girl, you couldn't get my child Come on, baby, let on my fire Come on, baby, let on my fire Try to set the night on fire Time to wait the day is through no time to wallow away no mind Try no we can only lose And our love becomes a funeral pile Go over on my fire Go over on my fire Try to set the night on fire Come on, baby, let my fire Try to set the night on 